We're three weeks into the transfer window and we are here to discuss Celtic's activity or lack of. That's this week's episode of 20 Minute Tims. Now with 20 Minute Tims, we are trying something new from now until the end of the season. We are working with a fantastic charity called the Kano Foundation. There'll be a link in the bio if you want to check them out. And what we are doing for the Kano Foundation is all the money that we make from YouTube, whether that's through ads or people that pay to watch without ads, we are donating to the Kano Foundation so they can take kids for free to Celtic Games. We think it's a fantastic cause and we are very pleased to be supporting them and by watching this video, you're supporting them too. Now, if you want to support us, if you like what we do and want extra content, you can get it on patreon.com slash 20 minute tims. But just by watching, subscribing, commenting and helping the algorithm, you're supporting the Kano Foundation too. So you can check them out with a link in the bio. Stephen, Melly. Yes. We are back with yeah. the flagship podcast. Now I've got to admit, a couple of weeks off, Celtic have had some downtime. So we've not been back in the studio and I thought by the time this rolls around, we will have a couple of juicy players oh, to talk about. Three or four bits of genuine quality yeah. to go straight into the first team. We'll have shipped out 10 by now as well. We'll have trimmed that squad right down to a nice 23, 24 players easily. So so on the scale of <laughs> a absolute bed wetter, which is here, <laughs> to relax with signs, Jota, on deadline day, where are you, where are you on this? Uh, I th well, I'm, I'm okay just now. I'm fairly relaxed about it. I think it's... I don't think there's any getting away from the fact that it's slightly underwhelming to get to this point and we've slightly. only got one player in and one player who we've had a game and he hasn't been involved. I think things would be slightly different if hypothetically we didn't have a game against Bucky Thistle. Let's say we had a game against, I don't know, Hearts or something like that. The last team he beat us at Celtic Park. Let's say we had a, a much tougher cup game and mm. then we were coming into maybe tougher league games after. I think there would be a lot of tension rising out there with the lack of signing so far. But I think the Celtic are in a a decent position just now in that the January break has happened now and there was a game to ease us all back in. We didn't need new signings for that just yet. So that was basically an extra week to do your business because that's the, it's not a surprise. It's not like we turn up and we find out our opponents on the day. Well, how good would that mm. be though? Well, that would, would be better, uh, that would be, be <laughs> Royal Rumble style. <laughs> you just turn up and then someone's yeah. music hits. My yeah. God, it's Bucky Thistle. Celtic are already <laughs> on the pitch. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Lauren Shanklin <laughs> swaggers out. And it was, oh my God, man. <laughs> but <laughs> no, So everyone knew it was going to be Bucky Thistle. So it does give you that little bit of extra prep. But it, with all due respect and all that, everyone knew they were going to beat Bucky Thistle. So there is that extra week or so to, to get the business done before the more pressing, more meaningful games begin. But as we, as we sit here in, what, the 22nd of January, the window slams shut in about eight or nine days, mm. depending on whether you when you watch or listen to this. It's not, it's not mind-blowing, but I'm fairly relaxed about it so far. <laughs> I want to hear let's more about... Check, let's check back in next Monday. I, I want to... Well, first of all, can you not say something controversial for the algorithm? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's like, the fuck, I want to hear more about this Royal Rumble idea you've <laughs> yeah. got. You know, the Undertaker's music hits, out walks Rangers. <laughs> 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 Melly, how are you feeling on a... We signed Jota on deadline day to absolute bedwetter. What uh, have you got any... Royal Rumble themed ideas you want to throw in <laughs> not quite yet it'd be good to do that for like the tenant sixes wouldn't it yeah. so you don't know what team you're going to get but I think the the transfer window just underwhelming as usual that whole right let's stumble along to January we'll bring in mm. the quality then three weeks into January and you're like, <laughs> it, it was never coming was it so it just seems like right lads that's the first of September we'll see you around the first of January and we'll kick this back off because mm. If, it, if Celtic were so hell-bent on getting to January and sorting all the problems of the summer, surely we'd have seen a bit more a bit more now, wouldn't we? Well, I think so. I mean, we've brought in Kuhn, who we, we obviously will talk about, but the manager sort of said he wants three or four bits of quality. Rumours have been about that Celtic are after a winger, they want a left-back, and they want a striker. And I think a few people have suggested that the goalkeeping area is one we need to address personally. As much as people got a problem with Joe Hart, one, I don't think it's a priority position. It's, yeah. we, we probably will strengthen if someone, you know, undeniable becomes available and we can get them, but I don't think it's a priority position. But I'm quite interested in this Beck story. Um, completely forgotten his first name as we sit Owen, here recording Owen, the yeah. podcast. Um, that was a strange one, wasn't it, Melly? Because he's impressed us at yeah. Dundee on loan. We really liked him. He did a great job against us as well. Um, the story sort of was bumbling along for most of the window and then... The Scott Burns, the Daily Record, reported yesterday, or during Sunday in the Bucky Thistle game, that he was available for loan. 
and then very quickly it was available to buy and then before the day's out he's played a game for Liverpool and it scuppers the whole the whole <laughs> idea of a transfer uh, it was disappointing wasn't that we were recording it at the match and I, I had a check just before we started recording he's not came on yet he's on the bench it was still it was still in the balance and then I said right he's not came on yet so hopefully he doesn't after we finish it looking he's came on for seven minutes and like, there's, there's so many ways you can look at it we're Celtic too late in doing it Do love, did Liverpool need the player whatever it is but it seems like there was genuine interest from Celtic in this guy we, we were linked with uh, Arojo the Portuguese left yeah. back mm -hmm. uh, Brendan Rodgers apparently vetoed that and maybe we were thinking that it's uh, Beck that's coming in in favour of him and then we can't get him so are we back to square one now we, how far along the line are we with these things I'm not sure. It's again, it's a difficult one to see because I can see it from all sides. Celtic were trying to get their man. Did they do enough? Or Liverpool maybe going like that? Yeah, we need this guy right now because we have no left back. So mm. whatever you want to do doesn't really matter, does it? Because they need a player. Whatever Celtic pay for uh, Beck is going to be a drop in the ocean for Liverpool. What's more important for them is the three yeah. points that they, they got at the weekend. So... Did Celtic dilly dally? Did Liverpool want to keep the guy? End of the day, Celtic have lost another target. So who's next? I think one thing's for sure, Stephen, that all these positions are critical. It's not a case of particularly the left back. It's not a case of we can probably do until summer without one. We need a left back in. We've basically got one at the club. That's, yeah. that's why I think the goalkeeper is, is critical because we needed one in the summer there. We haven't addressed it. Joe Hart, Wiley's been great and all that. I don't see him making saves. Do you think it was weird that he never trusted Scott Bain or... Well, Segris is completely out of the picture, but against Bucky Thistle, if you can't even play your second string goalkeeper at that point. Okay, I don't know. I think it's, it's one of those games. It's the first game back. We've already had, what, two or three weeks off. If we uh, leave a player out in this game, then they go into the Ross County game. They're nearly a month without playing a game of mm. football. That The Bucky Thistle game is essentially a friendly in the lead up to the game. And look, does Scott Bain or Segris deserve to play? I don't think so, like we were talking about yesterday. Is there MD that didn't start or was on the bench yesterday that you're thinking, Definitely want to see them or they deserve a shot. No, there's no. Mm. We've seen all these guys all from up to January. They've not been good enough. But I still think if Celtic are going to stumble through at the end of the season with uh, Joe Hart, then it could cost us. The trouble that comes along with waiting for so long to get your targets in, now, it, I suppose it follows on from, we all knew, and Brendan Rodgers has been talking about getting quality <clears> into this team for months now, yeah. so we basically knew in August that we're going to need to make signings in January, so why <laughs> why weren't they <laughs> in? Why still <laughs> <at all? laughs> Not only have, do we need signings, we need to fix the problems that were created by that disastrous transfer window in the first place, so we need we need to correct problems, we need to get Lagerbelka out now. After <laughs> well, yeah, there's signing. a section here on the outs. <laughs> right, right, okay. So the, the trouble with that is, is that the closer you get to the slamming shut of the window, the more it looks like you've just done it again, haven't mm. you? You've just sort of winged it through throughout January. And the Owen Beck thing, I mean, I've, I've no idea how close that ever was or how much of a, an interest there was. And for clarity, for, for anyone who hasn't uh, followed it too closely, what that means now is that he has played for the two teams mm. inside the same season. And therefore, even if we wanted to, even if Celtic wanted to send him, he cannot play for anyone else now, if that wasn't clear when we were talking about it. So it, it seems a, a strange one. If it, If it wasn't him, then it just doesn't seem like anyone else has been linked. I think it was when Luke Thomas yeah. who was spoken of, Leicester. Again, you would probably be dealing with quite a lot of money there. So maybe that's why it takes longer to deal with in, in January. If the, if the player's a little bit more high profile, maybe that's it's a case of ironing out more things for higher profile signings. But it just, <laughs> excuse me, it just feels like that Celtic are sort of doing that thing again. Well, that's where they're it. Well, rushing towards the end of the window. And even if it's not the case, even if it is just a case where we're working on things in the background, if you're signing players on the 29th, the 30th and the 31st, it leaves yourselves open to be accused of being like panic signings yet it's, again. It's, look, I know people will be listening to the podcast going, look, the proof is in the pudding. There's plenty of time left and the transfers will come in. I think, I suppose, my, my worry is that I kind of feel like I've seen this movie before. We were giving ourselves all this sort of pep talk before about players will come in and the, one, they don't arrive and two, the ones that do arrive aren't quite good enough. Now, there's a bit of debate to be had about Nicholas Kuhn and we'll talk about him. But I just, for me, these players are absolutely critical. I don't want to gamble on this league. We can't afford to gamble on the league. We can bet your bottom dollar that the Rangers are probably going to go out and strengthen. They already have one player. They're heavily linked to Lauren Shankland. They look as if they're bringing in a Danish midfielder. Whether these guys are good or not remains to be seen. But there's 
there's almost zero room for error for me in this January transfer window as far as the Celtic board go, the Celtic transfer team go, and even Brendan Rodgers. Yeah, and that's the thing we've been talking about the whole time, isn't it? We need to bring in a right winger who comes in and plays, a left back who comes in and plays, and a striker who's ready to play and if Kyogo's not having a good game or gets injured, then needs to play. But the, as fans, we go, well, as footballers, and when you're talking about it, you go, oh, the players will learn from this or the board need to learn from this or the manager will learn mm. from this. And as fans as well, we learn from this that like in the window there, we, we had, ah, I'll be fine. There's still plenty. There's 10 days left. There's seven days left. There's five days left. There's three days left. Oh, Jota Giacomacchus and that all came in in deadline day. Where's the free agents list yeah, on transfer market? And then <laughs> Five past midnight, where's the free uh, agents list? Who could we still get in? So uh, as fans, we learn from this. And like, because there's been such a build up to this window, like, stumble along to January, get there. And now we're looking at it and going, right, but we had all this time to have the targets there. So if that was your number one target and you can't get him, you go to number two, it doesn't really f have the feel like that's what's happening right it's now. It's very it? confusing, isn't it? It's very difficult to work out why transfers seem to go really smoothly for some clubs and for Celtic. They, they don't seem to go smoothly at all and particularly the last couple of windows, the hit rate hasn't been great and things seem to be taking a wee bit too long and other managers complained about how long it takes. Brendan Rodgers himself has complained about the lack of quality in the yeah. squad from January. So it, it's a crucial time for Celtic. It's a crucial time and I think you're sort of gambling with the league if you don't get these players in. But, pr but progress has been made, Stephen. We're brought in Nicolas Gerrit Kuhn from Rapid Vienna for about €3 million. Euros. He's an intriguing player because he's had quite an interesting history. He's been at some top clubs, but yeah, he's, this yeah. is him sort of breaking through now at Rapid and Celtic have come in. I saw online Rapid fans were sort of complaining about Right, but how can we possibly progress if we're selling our best player? So they obviously rate the guy. Yeah. In terms of what might take transfers so long... That, apparently, Celtic were looking at him weeks ago, but Rapid wanted to make sure that they had their replacement in place before they let him out the door. Which Imagine is it. <laughs> yeah, which is absolutely, which is understandable. What do you make of this? I, I'm fairly intrigued so far. It seems like a good profile of player. I don't think there's anything to really be read into <clears throat> in that he's been at bigger clubs and not played, because I've seen things like that before. If he's He's been at Bayern Munich... And who was the other one? It was Ajax. Ajax. Ajax, yeah, of course. So he's he's had a little bit of experience um, in the various levels at these clubs. But we have signed players like that before. So Frimpong was brilliant from Man City's academy. He'd never get, if he was still at Man City at 24, he wouldn't be anywhere near their first team and he'd still be bumming around and he'd still be in a position like kind of like Kuna as he's mm. arrived at 24. So, but on the flip side of that, we've also had guys like Tyler Blackett and yeah, Mark Crosas and all that who have come from the you know kind of various levels at massive clubs and never really proved anything. So I'm not reading too much into that and more focusing on the type of profile of player he is. And he seems like he's he, he's the kind of thing that Celtic have been missing mm. again before he's even kicked a ball. But it seems he himself described himself as creative, and yeah. I think he's supposed to be quite fast. Not the greatest of shooters, but mm. welcome to Celtic. Yeah. Welcome, welcome <laughs> to Celtic wingers. Um, so I'm I'm intrigued by it. I think it's a good start to the, the transfer business. I, I don't go along at all with the idea that he's some sort of like project or something. Again, he's far too old to be considered that. He's 24 years old. He, if if he doesn't play, if he comes in and doesn't play because he's, he's seen as some sort of long-term prospect, mm. then heads should roll, well, quite uh, frankly. I mean, that is, that is it. Like, yeah. that is completely it. Like, Whatever you want to call this, players for later, players for now, projects, club signings, manager signings, whatever you want to divide these sort of signings into the two camps you want to put them in. For the money we're paid for the guy and the need and the position that is pretty much vacant, it's a position that Brendan Rodgers has identified as he needs players in. There's no doubt the guy needs to come in and contribute. And he has had a peculiar career, Melly. I mean, I'm going to look at it. Came through at Leipzig, went to Ajax, went to Bayern Munich. Rapid Vienna, it's clubs before have seen something in this guy. I think if roughly he's, well, apart from James Forrest, he'll be second, Celtic's second oldest winger. So he's in there with Palmer, yeah. so 24, Maeda maybe a wee bit older than that, yeah. So you're looking at it, you're not going to come in and wait two years to mm. start playing. And like, I don't buy any of this project stuff. Celtic, Celtic don't really have the facilities to bring in players that they're not going to bring in. Celtic have identified a position, he's come in, he's in that position and he's a sort of profile we're looking for, somebody creative that we've been lacking since Jota left, we've got guys who can score goals in Palma and Abada but we don't have those guys that can create the chances for him so it looks like he's going to slot in right wing, Palma on the left wing and Kyogo up front 
and he's kind of got to because whoever it is, whether this is Brendan Rodgers signing, whether it's the recruitment team, it's a Celtic signing mm. and we need to start signing good players at that play football because Lord knows we've got a load of them that don't play football or come on, do the odd thing here and there. We need to bring in players that come in and play football and make a difference to this first team. We're crying out for it. Full Scouting Podcast on patreon.com slash 20 minute Tim's Melee sat down with Alex, Euro expert on Twitter to run rule over Nicholas Kuhn and we'll find out all about him, all his background, the style of play he is. One thing that I did pick up from that though, Stephen, and by the way, apologies, uh, DIY is happening next door to 20 minute Tim's Towers, so you may, <laughs> you may pick up some of that. We're trying our best to edit it out, but we can't catch it all, evidently. <laughs> um, one thing I picked up from Alex's scouting report is something that Melee touched on, Stephen, the creativity, and I think that's one thing I'm most looking forward to because... It seems with Palma and a similarly creative player on the other side, it might just be the key to unlocking this wee issue we've had with Kyogo. Not yeah. being able to create enough for him, struggling to find him with his runs. Another creative player out that side, It's it, it could just be the key that we need. Yeah, I, I suppose like, it might be asking too much, but ideally from a winger, you would like both. You would like <laughs> yeah. someone who is creative and carries a goal threat because how you, it doesn't really work like that. You wouldn't have like... Like Kuhn shapes up to take a shot, levels it way over the bar and goes like, sorry, Palmer's on the shots. I'm the creative one. <laughs> yeah. I don't really do this kind of thing. And likewise, the other way around. So ideally, you would like someone to, to not not necessarily be absolutely perfect at both, but have an element of both about their game. It'd, it'd be very, very disappointing if he comes in and he's very creative, but he shoots like latter-day Ryan Christie. Yeah. yeah so I, I hope that it's been slightly exaggerated that he's not the best in front of goal. We'll, we'll, I suppose we'll, we'll only find out when he starts playing. We, we, I can't, we can't fully judge it on that, but it's, it's an intriguing signing so far. I suppose it adds to the slightly underwhelming nature of the window as well in that he's a guy who's been signed in a position that we've got loads of players yeah. in. It, it, it's becoming cluttered around there. You never really know who's going to play here and there. It's completely necessary. We need a good one. To play yeah, there, it's, but... so it's... Is equal parts an excessive number of, winger, number of wingers, but also we desperately needed another one to come in. Would you say we've now got a million wingers? Yeah, yeah, we've <laughs> almost got a million wingers. Brendan Rodgers is about to crack up here. That's another positive, isn't it? Because that tells me that you know there's no conversations within the club where Brendan goes, "I need a winger." There's no, there's no pushback going. Oh, you've got a bad one. You've got Forrest. You've got Mikey Johnson. Yeah. You've got Van. Nah, we need a winger. Go out and buy this guy. Yeah. So we've been out and we've we've paid the money for him. Still a relatively young player, depending on what you look at at 24. In terms to. of experience, he probably is. Yeah. 24 is certainly not young for a footballer. Well, but that's what I was going. Not young yeah. in age, but in terms of breaking through, it's only been the last couple of years. It's not the years, honey, it's the mileage. Yes. <laughs> Indiana Jones once said, <laughs> yeah. So I, I'd, I'd agree with that. We've had a few players in like that before who suddenly get to a certain part of their career and they've not played a huge amount mm. of first-team football because they have been around clubs like that. Like Boyata was one... Uh, Tom Rogic a little Cut bit Cut Cut right Tati of course yeah. so we, we do we do have a, a, a track record with guys like that who just needed kind of just needed a home really yeah. a guy who a, a place where they could just develop and play their football just looking at his profile he does look as if a guy who's sort of been on the cusp of breaking through to yeah. a really good level before and just for whatever reason it's not worked out and you're hoping that Celtic under Brendan Rodgers with good players around them can give them that can give him that platform. So I'm I'm quite in, I'm intrigued about the signing and I'm glad like for me for one of the three positions I'm quite happy to tick that off. Yeah, you know, yeah, if there's a whiteboard yeah. there that says left back striker <laughs> yeah. and winger I'm quite happy to tick off the yeah. winger. We've got one of those guys in. I think another element of the transfer window is getting players out. Oh, yeah. but, but crucially crucially more importantly not letting key players go. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. We we can't have any desires to win this league and also sell Matt O'Reilly <laughs> when I saw he was linked to no Money Girona in yeah. La Liga I just thought to myself don't look nah let, not even don't even answer the phone uh, 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 unplug the fax machine yeah. let your phone battery die kid on you've missed every call I've got too many texts in my phone right yeah. now you see you COVID oh, inquiry uh, stuff just delete the lot you've not seen a single <laughs> thing and then re return to it again in the summer because yeah. You, uh, Carter Vickers as well so he was kind of linked midweek now Matt O'Reilly just signed a new contract Carter Vickers has got one on the table apparently but you can't you just can't entertain that at all no see, see if, if Celtic were to entertain any idea of selling Matt O'Reilly in this window I would want them investigated for the, the <laughs> management of this club no, no, it's been it's been in the news a lot like um, financial mismanagement and financial fair play so mm. Everton have been in the news Nottingham Forest a little bit I think Newcastle are 
are kind of on the cusp of it. Man United aren't really able to sign any players because of financial fair play and all that. Do you think it's possible for Celtic to be investigated and punished for the opposite? What, making so, too much yeah, money? Yeah, so, for, you've not spent anything here. <laughs> this is highly irregular. It's yeah. like, that was that movie, The Producers, where they, they invest all this money in a, cl in a club <laughs> just to make it yeah. fail. It's like, yeah. start selling our we best get, players, don't buy any. We get docked 10 points for not spending enough money. <laughs> like, Mr. Law, we'll have a look through your books here. You say you're running a football club here. This is <laughs> yeah. something very suspicious about the amount of money coming through here. Every other club's doing everything they can to be able to spend money. And we're just like, nah, it's, it's all right, we'll just leave it. But Matt O'Reilly simply can't be entertained. But mm. again, it's that hypocrite warning, isn't it? We cannot sell our best player yet. We are going, we need to go and buy that player. Yeah, I don't care if we take minnows, him off. Yeah. <laughs> from minnows, from clubs that don't matter. That's the, that's the difference. <laughs> but we, we, we are somewhere on that scale as well. But, oh, but did you see the video of um, Kuhn joining and uh, he's getting the tour around Celtic Park? You know, did you see, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, when he's yeah, he's yeah. getting led out into the stadium. It's just like, I'll just let you take it all in. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, this is where Celtic won the European Cup. You like that, don't you? Know? And I was like, this is a wee bit patronising. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave the guy just filming his reaction. It's like... Uh, it's like one of those videos of the like four-year-olds getting taken to their first game and they come up <laughs> the stairs and they're all bright-eyed. <laughs> it's like someone feeding you something and they're just like waiting for your reaction <laughs> to see how much you enjoyed it. I don't know why I brought that up. <laughs> oh yeah, it was the patronising nature of how we want to take these guys uh, from yeah. small clubs and show them all our shiny toys. Uh, it's always the case. We, we want absolute top dollar for yep. our players as well, mm. but we want absolute minnows to sell players to us for buttons is like <laughs> Aberdeen if, see if we wanted the, if, if we wanted Mayovsky for example we would want Aberdeen to sell him for 500 grand so we can punt them for 20 in the next couple <laughs> the, of years the thing is though Matt O'Reilly has just more or less signed a new contract with Celtic he's very 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 happy here I, I think it would take an enormous sum of money an enormous change of heart for Matt O'Reilly to turn around and say okay I, I want to entertain this bid yeah I, I think we're all realistic about it we want to go someday but the idea of it, it would be halfway through a season is completely absurd to me in a very serious there was a rapid vena podcast having the same conversation <laughs> yeah. about uh, oh, the yeah, clips on a, on, a, on a very serious note aside from all the all the jokes we're making about the, the absurdity of selling a guy like that halfway through a season if we sell either Matt O'Reilly or Cameron Carter Vickers who has been linked with a couple of moves down south as well sell either one of those let alone both you're you're playing with the league at that yeah, point you're, you're in serious playing with the enemy then yeah, that oh, yeah well that's true but you're in serious danger of seriously impacting your, your league chances if you sell one of your best players halfway through a season. Bear in mind, we've turned the, sh the ship around largely with the four straight wins. It's now five, or five. a streak of five after the Bucky Thistle, but leading into the break what against Rangers was great. We started to turn that ship around, but the first half of the season was a little bit a little bit lukewarm. To take Matt O'Reilly out of that is completely unthinkable. I couldn't imagine anything entertaining any sort of bids whatsoever I don't care about the money as we've already just well, joked about it I'm not interested in, <laughs> in further uh, furnishing the Celtic coffers with tens of millions of pounds it's of no interest to me whatsoever when it comes to selling our best players at this position of the season no chance well, what I'm looking at here is take Matt O'Reilly out of that team Look how many goals he has got a hand in oh, now. He's yeah. at the centre of everything Celtic do, even against Bucky Fissel. He was man of the match, absolutely brilliant. So take him out of the team. I don't think Celtic, they don't win the league for yeah. me. They don't. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Celtic will be daft enough to sell him. And I'm, I'm not really entertaining this, oh, I think Bernardo's a replacement for him. But Bernardo's playing beside him. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> who replaces Bernardo? <laughs> so uh, I think Celtic need to keep O'Reilly. They need to keep Carter Vickers. But Look, see if teams want to come for our players. We've got 10 dozens of them yeah. you can yeah. pick from. No, the good ones, but take any any amount of bad ones because that squad is littered with players that, honestly, like after the, the Bucky Fissel game, I said to Stephen, see if he didn't feature in that game, leave. Because mm, yeah. what's the point? What's the point? The manager didn't think you were up to it to play in that game. So why, why be here? Because you're not going to play football. I was interested in a couple of loans that happened now. You might think I'm mad here, but <laughs> see when I saw Quan go on loan to St Mirren, I thought there might actually be, maybe he isn't as terrible as I previously thought he was. And here's my logic, let me see if you can follow it, right? I know it's difficult on this podcast <laughs> sometimes, right? But here's my logic, right? St Mirren don't need to take on someone who's absolutely awful. I'm talking about a Celtic B team level midfielder. St Mirren don't need to take one of those on. If they do... There's plenty of them available that aren't Quan, which would you would think would be 
an easier player to integrate into your squad. There's no adjustment period. You're not messing things about too much. You just take on someone else or someone else from the league or from Celtic's B team. And then he and then he plays for St. Mirren and he actually does quite well. And, yeah. I, and I was thinking to myself, maybe he isn't just like the the worst of the worst. Come on, maybe there's just something else that's that's holding him back from actually competing at Celtic. One, the amount of sheer number of bodies that are in his position <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah. the amount of players that we've got there. And maybe just not quite at Celtic's level yet. So I'm interested to see how he gets on at St. Mirren. But that was an intriguing loan for me because if he's as bad as we all think he is, i.e. Celtic... B team player never going to play for Celtic. Absolutely terrible. There's no reason for St. Mirren to take the guy on loan. No, there's not. But there's there's also if you look at it, maybe St. Mirren have got a good contact with Celtic and go, we need a midfielder, and Celtic can go, hey, we have got plenty for yeah. you to choose from here. But look, if Quan goes out, I don't know. I know it's not as simple as that, and I know it's not football manager. But look, we know teams aren't going to be able to play these guys full wages, mm. but. Is not the the test for these guys doing it in the Scottish Premier League? Is that not mm. how they sh- we should know? Look, if they're not playing for Celtic, why don't we get them out to a team and see if they can do it for six months? It's worked for a couple of players in the the past before, but Celtic should be doing this. Like, if anything, these guys go out and they do well. It gives us other teams a better chance of being better in the league to help us as well. Loan these guys out, get them tested at the level we're at and see if they don't make it. We know they're not mm. going to make it at Celtic. They're sitting and not playing for Celtic. Does nobody any good. Quan's went out there and he's not been brought in there just to make up numbers. He's went in and went straight yeah. in the team. I don't know how well he done. It sounds like he done okay, but I'm not quite sure on that. But I will be keeping an interest in it. But even still, even if Quan does go there and do well, Callum McGregor's only 30 years old. Are we going to loan this guy out for three, four, five years until Callum <laughs> McGregor's finished? Mm, Why are we yeah. stockpiling these players? There's home at the weekend, played in the number six position. How many players have we got in that position? Matt Riley can play as well. Nah, he played at the end of the game. Else, yeah. I, I don't think Quan, in fairness, I don't think Quan was ever going to be as bad as, as was made out. Mm. I think, unfortunately, he just came to symbolise the disaster that was that transfer. When the See, he, 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 more than anyone, sort of summed up how bad that was. The, the performance in that Bilbao game is genuinely <laughs> yeah, as bad yeah. as I've ever mm. seen for a, a player in a friendly. It, but... it was shocking, but that that's really all we're going off of. Um, and the, the reason that he came to symbolise more than anyone else the abject failure of that transfer window is because he's the only one who hasn't played. So he's the furthest away from the first yeah. team. Even Tilio has had the odd run out here and there. Everyone else has played somewhat. The, even Phillips played. Even the, all these guys have played. Stop remind us. Yeah, go on, go on. It's good, this isn't it? Even I'm just <laughs> just listing bad footballers that have played for Celtic. But um, this season, <laughs> so, but so Quan just came to came to be the meme of that mm. transfer. Well, it's not his fault. I, I don't think he was ever as bad as as that was made out. It was just the it was just the whipping boy for that that trans. No, no, whipping boy is far too strong. The no poster one, boy. Yeah, yes, correct. Put the poster boy for that bad bad transfer window that happened. So. Uh, uh, good luck to him. I, I hope uh, echo Melly sentiments on that. I thought I hope these guys go out and do something that either makes some a consideration coming back to Celtic or that gets them a move somewhere else. It, it has expect worked. to see things heating up towards the end of the window as, yeah, as far as out, to, outgoings go. I have got to. I'm I'm quite disappointed in that so far because it's just the same old story there as well. I think Idiguchi's the only permanent outgoing. Mm. So Idiguchi's gone, Quan is on loan, Adam Montgomery's on loan, a couple of younger boys are on loan. Mm. So the material impact to the first team squad is zero so yeah, far. Yeah. Like, there's no difference to and the it's squad. it's something Brendan's commented on, he says he yeah. wants to get players out as well. Yeah, so none of those players have bothered a first team squad. Apart from Quan sitting in the odd bench here and there, none of them have been near a first team, a first 11 for ages. So the impact on the first 11 or the surrounding core squad is zero mm. so we need to get more players out just for the health of the squad really I know that having these guys around doesn't really impact the the standard of play but just for a a, a healthy in playing and training environment Brendan Rodgers wants a certain makeup of squad and he said it so many times he wants a smaller squad 24-25 players maximum we've got 10-11 players over that <laughs> in, in excess of that mm. and they're all still here three weeks into the transfer window so Ideally, I would like to start getting positive moves, outgoings for players that might not be worth a lot, 
and again, I'm not really bothered about the money, but David Turnbull's got to go. Mikey yeah. Johnston's got to go. Yeah. All the, uh, as much Forest. as Mikey Johnston's been all right recently, he's actually done all right. He nutmegged a Bucky Thistle player. It's all it takes. No one goes home empty handed. Yeah. <laughs> Mikey Johnston has nutmegged a Bucky Thistle player. But I don't but you think see, it changes I mean, anything. It doesn't because yeah. we've signed someone that plays in his position. Yeah, exactly. So but we're we're moving on. And the idea is towards the end of this window, we're going to bring in hopefully two or three more genuine bits of quality so all these guys are falling further and further down what, what we're in the extraordinary position of doing is we are forcing down players down the pecking order who have only been here six months <laughs> <laughs> so we've got new signings who have been forced down the pecking order who haven't who haven't really figured all that much so I, I would expect more to go out but hopefully it's not on a load of absolutely pointless loans because that really annoys me for some mm. reason I don't know why we, we signed these players and we had the discussion recently about the giving them far too long a contract no one really knows that at the time it's the gamble you, you take isn't it nobody knows that Kobayashi is going to be a completely a complete dud forgot all about, forgot all about yep. him there's another one so Kobayashi is on a five year contract and is still floating about he is by the looks of it just going to go on Three loans until we forgot, forget all mm. of them and then we pay up his contract and he goes. So I want Celtic to do a wee bit more proactive about that, even if it does mean taking a short-term hit on the transfer values of these players. They've got we to really go. do need to be more dynamic in the transfer window. And it's I think the only thing is, we're not sitting here having a grump and a moan, but there's been no... There's been an admission that the, the squad lacks. right? So Brendan Rodgers said the squad lacks quality. There's been an admission from the manager that he has too many players and we're not seeing an awful lot of action on that front as yet. And there's not been an admission that maybe they got things wrong in the window, but I don't think the manager's totally blameless because he did see he gets final sign off on all the players. That yeah. doesn't mean he absolutely wants them, you know. That that can mean a million things. Do you want Lewis Palmer or do you want nobody? Well, I'll take Lewis Palmer <laughs> then. So over there you go. So you've got... You've what got are the options again? Yeah, so you've got final sign off on them. But having a look through all the players that we signed in the summer, there's... They all do follow a certain pattern. They're all similar ages. They all played in similar sort of levels of league. We all paid kind of similar money for them, similar international recognition. But crucially, a lot of them have got, they've all got one flaw. So they've all got that thing that sort of means they've ended up at Celtic. So Lagabielka, really, really slow. Home, really, really slight. Give me another one. There's, it's difficult to say because lots of them haven't even played Telio. Professionalism and effort and Yang, good dribbler but a headless chicken. Yeah, yeah, Yang, good dribbler but a headless chicken. I don't know if that comes up in a scouting report or not. <laughs> you forgot to <coughs> untick the headless chicken box Aye. again. But so they've, they've all got like one crucial flaw that seems to be the reason the manager can't trust or can't play on them. So I, I just need to see a player come in where I go, I've got absolutely no doubt about this guy. And even with Nicholas Kuhn coming in, I'm like, right, okay, I can see it. I've watched the videos, listened to the, listened to the scouting podcast that you did with Alex. But then again, I'm like, right. You're just, giving him the side eye. I'm giving him what's this. What's your thing? Aye. What's your problem? Aye, what, what's, your, what's your thing? Why did it not work out at Ajax? Why did it not work out at Leipzig or Salzburg, whatever one it was? Why did it not work out at Bayern? So I've, I've sort of side eyeing him to see what, what his fatal flaw is. The, the, the fatal flaw thing is true, isn't it? Because it's the, a flaw makes it seem like it's minor, but it seems to be with these guys, that's the reason nobody else went for them. Yet we think, ah, we can maybe teach that. No, you can't. No, yeah. you can't. Like you can't teach pace and that that we've signed slow defenders. Uh, we're playing in the Champions League, lads. If you're slow, you get found out straight away. But I think we, I think with Kuhn, it's a bit unfair that we're side eyeing him because he's just a sort of symptom of the the summer. There's nothing it? wrong with him. It Aye. might just be that he sells dogs or something like that. He make <laughs> <laughs> sells XL bullies. <laughs> <laughs> What's his thing? Uh, <laughs> that's why I didn't make it. Uh, yeah. But if uh, if Kuhn was brought in under Ange, you'd go, all right, like fast guy, this is it. But because of the way it's happened in the summer, we've we've just we've got doubts over everything. Mm. Why Celtic are getting to these players? How far down the list are they? Why did it take so long? And I think it's it's poor. We just wanted to feel like Celtic had learned from the mistakes, but I just don't get that impression yeah. because it's not been. Right, let's sort this straight away. There's there's no excuses now. I don't care if the Bucky Thistle game's three weeks into the window, then we've got a week's break till Ross County. Every manager says they want players in as early as possible. So are, are we just three men on a podcast saying Celtic prove us wrong? Yeah. <laughs> Help yeah. us out, show, shows it's not going to go the same well, way as it did before. That, this shouldn't be taken as, as just grumbling and mumping and moaning about the lack of transit. As a club, as an ambitious football club, you need to be pushing all the time. What is the the one thing that everyone accuses the board of is being happy to just be one point ahead yeah. of Rangers. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say that 
the, oh, the board are only interested in being better than Rangers. Meanwhile, oh, we've beaten Rangers a few weeks ago, so it doesn't matter. We'll be, we'll be absolutely I, fine. I think the key difference is this time as well, the manager's been very, very vocal Aye. about yeah, what yeah. he wants. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like, oh, we'll, we'll, you know, I'm happy with the squad. He could have at any time says, I'm happy with the squad. I'll see, you know, if we get one or two in, if the opportunity present ourselves that can enhance the squad, obviously we'll take a look at it, but I'm pretty comfortable. No, he's come out and said, this is what I want. Yeah. And it's the same as the outgoings. My squad's too big. So it's all pretty clear and we're looking for, as fans, we're looking for progress in that direction, in the in the direction that the manager's publicly stated. It's it's really obvious. And he's pouring cold water on any ideas of, like a new signing as well. So yeah. for example, Rocco Vatha comes in out of the wilderness and scores against Bucky Thistle. Looks good. Looks looks athletic. Looks the type of player that's, that Celtic should be investing time and money into. Where he goes, I don't know. I mean, it might be he scored a goal and then leaves the same month. Who cares? Waste mm. of time. Or he scores that goal and signs a new contract. It remains to be seen. But it was put to him after the game about how well, he's the type of player that you would surely want to keep around. And he, he was basically just saying, look, he needs a lot of work. So he's not even allowing for any of that. Oh, do we need a striker? Yeah. Do we need yeah. more attacking players? Because we'll get Rocco Vata coming through here. He just shot that down straight away. So encouraging to see I, that I'm as interested well. to see. And there's a few wee things that have sort of made me feel a wee bit negative. The own Beck thing is a complete mystery to me. I was, yeah. we were talking before we sat down to record, I've never seen the likes of it where someone's talking to the press. Someone's, because, you know, we all have our opinions about the press and, you know, it's their own fault because they do write something or rubbish sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, you don't get somebody going, Celtic want this player on loan. Two hours later, Celtic are going to buy this player. Two hours after that, he's, he's playing for his club and he, the deal's done. So I, I'm curious as to see what happened there. I know we were after Chris Garden. His club says that we're not interested in selling him in January. He's our best player. We're not interested in doing that. So you think to say, well, that was one we were kind of missing out on in summer. So we'll fail to get that deal done. So there is a there is a nervousness on my part. I'm not so concerned about without goings as you are. No, Brendan wants it. Yeah. It's a bonus for me. I'm just really concerned about, about the incomings because I think, like Melly says, you're gambling on the league if, if you don't get them in. Yeah, there's no, there's nobody Celtic are now missing that, oh, he comes back and makes a difference, is it? We've got a bad in. Is he going to be playing? Probably not. If kuhn has been bought in, he's going to play ahead of him. Hattati's the one, isn't he? But Bernardo, O'Reilly and McGregor are all playing well. We don't really know. McGregor was just given an extended rest period. So it's no the... The positions, the the positions we need to sort, left back, goalkeeper, striker. We're not thinking O is going to come back and he's going to be the answer to all the problems, is he? So Celtic squad, as it is the now, still needs quality. And I think the the Bucky Thistle game again, didn't he? It, it still highlighted the same things. Like Greg Taylor's been decent recently, but a stronger, more powerful runner demands the ball more than that mm. for me, and it makes things more things happen. The amount of times Abada was caught offside and the amount of balls he could have put across better. Like, it's Bucky Fissel and we've got certain players who I'm not expecting just to come back after three weeks and stand out and look absolutely brilliant, but I'm expecting you to look better than the guys you're up against and I'm expecting you to just look a class above. We didn't really do that in a lot of positions, so I think Celtic's issues are still there. One of them's been addressed, whether he's good or not doesn't really matter because he's been brought in we've paid decent money for him he's of the profile and calibre that Celtic should be going for where's the rest of it? Yeah I did I heard your comments on the Bucky Thistle thing you were quite scathing about home and I think uh, to be honest I, the, the the Discord were a bit they, they didn't agree but I think I think you're right I think it's particularly with home who's not had a lot of game time who's in a crowded position and a bad or less so because Abada's really not getting anything to prove it, no. uh, he's done a lot for Celtic scored a lot of important goals We've all got our opinions on whether or not he's how good a player Abada is in the grand scheme of things, but I don't think the pressures on Abada aren't the same as the pressures on home. When you're when you're Tiago home, you need to come out in a game like that and go, right, it's my chance to press. If you're no, you're no going to get a better chance to impress the manager and impress the Celtic fans in a, in a game like that. No, and he, like, he's playing the number six position again. Another guy in yeah. that <laughs> position. So that if that's his best position. He's not going to play. He's not going to play because Cal McGregor's going to come in. But when he does play like he did at the weekend, I just felt, right, right, okay, mate, here's your chance. Again, you've come in, you've played sort of the number eight positions. He's been subbed every game he's played in early on. Sometimes at half-time. Aye. Yeah. And with that game, I just felt, right, I'm, I'm, me and other people just falling in love with this idea of this guy. Because mm. apart from a flick against St Mirren, his goal was decent, but during the game from what I want to see from a number six he should have the most touches on the ball Cal McGregor when he's in that position gets the ball off his centre halves and he's constantly on the ball then you see that from him and those slack passes he get caught in the middle of the pitch on the ball and even these 
his distribution wasn't great for me, so I'm just looking for him to say, ah, this is this is what we'll get from mm. him. I didn't see it, and if you can't do it against Bucky Fissel, the level's going to yeah, go yeah. up a bit. Look, I still think it, there's there's plenty of time for the guy, but when are we going to see it? One flick against the Mirren isn't enough. When I see uh, Tiago Holm, the, the thing that comes to mind is power, and yeah, it's one yeah. thing that Brendan Rodgers asked for, and he doesn't really scream power to me, but... I mean, nor does Nicholas Goon, to be perfectly honest with you. In my mind, when Brendan Rodgers is talking about power and quality, I think he's talking about, you know, six foot odd, strong, pacey runner, you know, that sort of thing that can sort of r not run over. I'm not looking for a quarterback no, or someone that just runs over the top of opponents, but I'm looking for somebody that's got a bit of physicality about them. NFL fans out there absolutely cracking up at that. I know what a quarterback <laughs> does. He sits at the back and throws the ball, okay? <laughs> he just but, runs. Right, runs right, name, name another American football position. Oh, Huh. Wide receivers? Nah, don't start. That's not a thing, <laughs> right? Okay. But, you, but uh, that's when I think of home, I'm thinking, we've signed a five foot seven, nine stone footballer <laughs> here. The, that's a, that was another thing in the summer. Like, everyone we signed is like nine stone and under yeah. six foot. I'm like, we can't get enough of it. <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> just collecting them again and not one of them comes up to the, the standard or the, the at least the on paper profile of yeah. what Brendan Rodgers was talking about. So I, I don't know about Kuhn. I think... From from what I can gather, he's 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 fast, but whether that equates to, it's it's quite hard to articulate, isn't it? Because we associate with powerful running is slightly yeah. different. There's not so much mind it for his wingers because that's the type of player they are. But I think it's that powerful running, that even that bit of pace, like it can make such a difference. We've seen towards the the end of the before the break there that. Celtic players making runs was making such a difference so if we can just add a wee bit into that that bit of creativity out in the right maybe that powerful running down mm. the left that Brendan Rodgers wants it will make such a difference and maybe that alternative to Kyogo if he's maybe not if we need something different we just we just need to get there because look the Bucky Fissel game was basically an exhibition game wasn't it? but if that was a game in a couple of weeks we've got Aberdeen and Hibs away and yeah for the four days, the space of four days with each other. If one player like Kyogo gets injured for that, what does Celtic do? Is Rocco Vata going to be the answer? Is is that good enough for Celtic? No, it's not. I think for for many reasons, for many obvious reasons, the Bucky Thistle game is never going to be a classic, was it? No. Because the conditions were absolutely the wild, absolutely horrendous throughout the the whole city. But particularly, there was moments during the game where. It got to that point where you could see the rain just swirling in a circle <laughs> in, the, in the bowl of the stadium under the under the lights. Not it was absolutely horrible. And I heard that the the Bucky Thistle manager say that they basically just worked on a system for that one off game. And I, I kind of thought to myself, I was like, why would you do that? Is it is turning up with a back five at Celtic Park going to really benefit you in any way, shape, or form? You might be able to kind of keep well, it you down. You don't know because it could have been fifteen. Uh, it could have been, it could have been <laughs> I had fifteen. Not been for that back yeah, five. I just, I just thought to myself, look, it's, it's a one off. There's absolutely no pressure on them whatsoever. Just go and try and kind of leave a, bl a bit of a black eye on Celtic. And they did have that one chance, but it was never going to be a classic. And Celtic, I, I wasn't really bothered about it because it really was just a case of trying to get through it with as little drama as possible, as few mm. injuries, just get the, the game won. And Callum McGregor rested. Uh, Callum McGregor. Uh, was, uh, when was the last time we had both Callum McGregor and, well, Cameron Carter Vickers, Callum McGregor and James Forrest not in a Celtic squad <laughs> going back decades <laughs> it feels like but I, it was just a case of, of getting the, the game won and I think as I say we'd, I'd pro I think we'd be feeling very very differently just now if we'd had a tough game to come back to yeah. in, in the cup even maybe like a championship team we yeah. would have felt very differently about it so it was a good game to get but business has got to start now we've got a well, full week of it there's no excuses basically well, a it. full week that I think the the, the window will I think we'll get about eight days or something so there's just that one game in, on the horizon you just need to start getting the stuff Bucky done. Thistle manager is not under pressure but the Celtic board and the Celtic recruitment team oh, and yeah. the Celtic manager are under pressure because it's, it's, that's it the holidays are over yeah, Christ, yeah, Christmas yeah. is gone the tree's packed away business as usual we're in, switched it out of office off yeah <laughs> this is the business end of the season and it's there's, there's lots and lots, we've still got the double to play for, there's cup games, there's league games, and yeah, the, without a doubt, we need to get strength. And Melly, I'm going to give you the final word this week. Thank you. <laughs> right, okay, and on that bombshell, <laughs> we shall wrap up. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for supporting us on patreon.com slash 20 Tims, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>